With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Monday, May 2nd, 2016. Just a day after protesters stormed into the Green Zone in Baghdad, Iraq, the man who sent them in, Shiite cleric Maqtada al-Sadr, has ordered the protesters to leave peacefully. The New York Times reports that on Saturday, Iraqi protesters demanding an end to corruption in their government stormed the fortified Green Zone, which contains the U.S. Embassy along the Tigris River in Baghdad. According to reports, the storming of the publicly forbidden area hinted at a revolution. But by Sunday evening, after a day that saw protesters praying, sleeping, and taking a dip in the slip in the swimming pools, the scene reportedly became an affirmation of the sway that Mr. Sadr holds over the streets. In a statement issued from the city of Najaf in southern Iraq, Mr. Sadr directed his followers to leave the green zone in an orderly fashion to chant for Iraq and not for a sect and to help clean the space they had occupied. The U.S. Embassy issued a statement on Sunday that expressed concern about the sit-in, but said that on top of helping to fight Daesh forces, all Iraqis should work to move the political and economic reform process forward. The FISA court, which allegedly monitors and regulates federal law enforcement, did not deny a single government request for surveillance in 2015. Reuters reports that a Justice Department document released to certain congressional committees shows that of the over 1,400 requests for surveillance authority made, all were granted by the Foreign Surveillance Intelligence Court. Enacted in 1978 to handle federal law enforcement applications for surveillance warrants against foreign suspects, the court has been little more than a rubber stamp for federal law enforcement, according to civil liberties advocates. Recently, the secretive FISA court, which meets behind closed doors, gained notoriety after former CIA and NSA employee Edward Snowden allegedly leaked classified documents enumerating domestic surveillance techniques to the public. The Justice Department document also notes that in 2015, the FBI made over 48,000 national security requests, over 9,000 of which targeted U.S. citizens. These national security letters, available since the 1970s and generally accompanied with an open-ended gag order, have recently been used to subpoena Internet and telecommunications firms to release customer data, including web browsing history, email addresses, and subscriber information. A California judge recently ordered that a suspect could be forced to use their fingerprint to unlock their cell phone. Matt Hamilton and Richard Winton of the Los Angeles Times reports that a case involving an Armenian gang member saw authorities obtaining a search warrant for a phone allegedly connected with a suspect and that then compelled his girlfriend to use her fingerprint to unlock the device. The phone apparently contained Apple's fingerprint identification system, which uses the user's print rather than a passcode. According to Albert Jadari, a director of privacy at Stanford Law, although the Fifth Amendment states that no person shall be compelled in a criminal case to be a witness against themselves, courts have apparently categorized fingerprints as real or physical evidence, unlike a passcode which requires a conscious thought. Susan Brenner, a law professor at the University of Dayton, argued the point saying that the very act of compelling a person in custody to use their own fingerprint to unlock a device breaches the Fifth Amendment's protections. It was not specified what authorities wanted from the phone, and when asked, Assistant U.S. Attorney Vicki Cho said that the search was part of an ongoing investigation. And finally, have you ever felt like sitting in a movie theater is just too relaxing and felt the need to intensively work out? According to Engadget.com, a startup in Brooklyn, New York has heard your call. IMAX Shift is now providing spin classes for city-dwelling people who don't necessarily have the option to ride their bicycles where they live. The company is setting up their first indoor cycling experience that combines scenic movies that give the impression that members are cycling along places like the Hawaiian coast, features music reactive visuals, and comes with monthly memberships of over $300. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.